Hi everyone, this is Jim Egan, head of school, Synup School, with another update on a beautiful October Friday. Uh, looks like it's going to be a gorgeous weekend here. Plenty of to uh, plenty of things to discuss uh, and talk about, but I want to focus on a few announcements. Uh, first, uh, I've talked to you about the EVS survey, the climate survey that we give educational vital signs. Uh, please take that, take the time to take that. That feedback is really important for us, as I have stated. The kids take it, the teachers take it. Uh, staff, board, and parents too. So please do give us that feedback. Look into the uh, the newsletter for the link. Uh, the annual fund is off and running. Thanks to many of you for already pledging your support. Uh, again, 100% participation is the goal. If you have questions, reach out to me, to Sarah Hill. We're gonna have some information sessions uh, happening with our uh, parent volunteers as well as uh, uh, some board members. Uh, we're looking forward to that. So please, again, the annual fund is super important. And Portfolio Day is coming up uh, next week. This is a big deal for our school. If you're a returning parent, the kids know that, who've been here in the past. But we do have 70 plus new kids this year. Uh, so Portfolio Day uh, is a day for your child to really showcase and express the learning that they um, experienced throughout trimester one. So it's a big deal for our parents and for relatives and caregivers as well. So make sure you're a part of that day and look for emails from Katie Morgan and uh, Stephanie Cito in the middle school and certainly in the newsletter for those types of things too. Um, okay, with those out of the way, um, I, I wanted to point out uh, a group of teachers that are uh, just outperforming themselves, uh, and those are our associate teachers, right? So we have an associate teacher program here at Synapse that um, looks to train and grow teachers uh, in our SEL model and in our constructivist uh, project-based learning uh, approach as well as uh, uh, with the teaching of innovation, right? So it's a it's a it's a multi-year program. Uh, this year, being that we're in COVID, these um, these associates, most of them, have been um, asked to step into stable cohort roles, right? And uh, on campus and one in distance. And I just can't say enough about this group, and that is uh, Paxton and Ali and Stephanie and Blair, and Mike, and Tori, and Adam, and Sue, and Elizabeth, who is uh, in distance. They are just um, really providing our kids um, safe spaces, fun spaces, creative spaces, uh, and uh, I wanna express my gratitude uh, to this, this specific group. I see them every day working incredibly hard uh, here on campus. And, um, and I know also I'm checking in with them to make sure uh, they are feeling supported, uh, which they are by Trina Courier as always and by uh, Katie Morgan, absolutely, and Stephanie as well. Um, and yeah, I've asked them in, in emails how they're feeling too. And I, you know, I have some quotes here, I'll, I'll keep the names off it. But uh, one is, I can't express enough uh, uh, how happy I, am, happy I am to be part of the team that's from an associate when i asked how he was doing and another wrote back to me um, i feel very lucky to be working at such an incredible school and with a group of such amazing people i would agree uh, so again our associates who are in training are um, just uh, thriving in their roles and performing such an essential function uh, this year in particular i wanted to make sure i i acknowledge them uh, right now uh, okay, uh, another acknowledgement. Uh, the National Association of Independent Schools has an annual conference, and for independent schools, this is the big, this is the big kahuna, so to speak, in terms of uh, annual conferences and the opportunity to present in front of uh, your peers. Right? There's about 1,600 independent schools uh, across the country. And we have had a, a large presence at most of the conferences in the past due to our uh, sort of creative school and, and the, that, that we really are distinct in many ways. And uh, we just found out uh, that Isha and Liz T and myself, uh, our presentation was accepted for this year. It's going to be a virtual conference at the annual conference, NAS annual, annual conference. And um, the workshop is... Uh, titled Horn of Plenty or Life Preserver, One School's Distance Learning Approach During a Global Reset. 
Uh, I'm really excited to be presenting with Isha, uh, who is in a new role for our school, a new role for Isha as well as the Director of Distance Learning, and Liz T. Too. So we'll be presenting. That's a really um, exciting uh, uh, piece of news, particularly for these two great uh, emerging leaders and educators. And I get to go uh, online and Zoom and do it with them. So that's fun as well. Uh, and um, I wanted to also talk about a book I was reading. Uh, I've read it before. I pulled it back off the, the shelf by Michael Thompson. It's called The Pressured Child. Here's a copy of it. And it's um, really about helping uh, children find success. If you know Michael Thompson, he wrote Raising Cain. He's come to visit the school. In fact, he knows about Synapse. Uh, he spent many, many years in uh, school in Boston. Uh, and he's well known in uh, the world of child development. He's a psychologist. He, he's well known in the independent school world. Um, and he's also a bit of an expert on boys. And I was thinking of him after talking with a, a mom about an eighth grade boy, actually. And uh, we have meetings um, each year for those kids in eighth grade who are going off to uh, high school the next year. We meet with families and we prepare uh, them in that process, right, with our um, placement counselor. Stephanie's involved in this process, too. And so Stephanie, Stephanie and I meet with each family to discuss uh, the child and um, what's life going to be like beyond synapse and this mother was um, explaining uh, a bit about her child an eighth grader here and that you know we see one version and then there's this other version that's there too right which is very real and it, it led me back to this book around um, around that, that sort of the pressured child and uh, I want to read a little bit here uh, Michael Thompson writes about the psychological aspects of education, right, and what is sometimes missing. And he says, um, we always talk about education, right, and um, there are sort of three agendas, right? So the lesson, right, whatever lessons or projects are going on, that's the adult agenda for children. The strategy is what children develop in order to cope with both the reality of the lesson and the many other things they are interested in learning from school. There's more than just a lesson, right? So he goes on to talk about the lesson, right? The lesson is terribly incomplete, and that's really what adults want. That's what parents want. Sometimes it's what even teachers want, right? It's paramount. The lesson is the basic assumption. The importance of school is obvious and undeniable for parents, uh, that the lesson matters most. The strategy is what children bring to the school experience their attempts to deal with the demands of school, the kind of learning style they have, the expectations of their parents, and the complex social requirements of their peers. Every child, no matter how disinterested or out of it, he seems or she seems about the demands of school is constantly refining a strategy for holding these intense and conflicting forces in place. He then goes on to say that that third piece is self-knowledge. Self-knowledge is what children actually achieve in school. That's the achievement, right? Self-knowledge. Most are the better for their school experiences, right? Kids in the mainstream emerge with confidence and a passionate interest in something. Uh, and, and that's really, I believe, true. Um, I skipped ahead and um, was, was reading about development as well. And so I think this ties in here with this statement. Development is the fundamental engine of a growing child and to the extent that anyone is in control, the child is in charge. The mystery is how nature and nurture merge and what people, excuse me, what person comes out of that ongoing process. Whatever else he or she is doing in math, science, English, or history, every child is also immersed in his or her own uniquely internal curriculum. Each must find a way to manage the opportunities and expectations of school and the deeper desires and demands of his or her own development. It is a huge job, an arduous and often painful one. For the most part, a child does it alone and unappreciated. I think, um, I think that for the most part that is true. I will say uh, we work very hard as partners with parents and in particular with kids to make sure that they aren't alone. But Michael Thompson is right. We all have our own internal narrative and our own 
actualization that's happening. The development is gonna happen. And the kid, your kid, is in charge. That is key. So this weekend, I want you to think about your uh, experience back in a K-8 educational setting, not a high school setting, parents, not a college setting. I have lots of those conversations that parents say, oh, I remember in my math class, well, what math class? Well, freshman year in college. Okay, that's different. Think about yourself in a K-8 setting, right? It may even be hard to do that. Most of the time, uh, I find with parents and myself, memories below fifth grade are hard to come by. Uh, I can tell you that children are developing at their own rates. And I think if you think back to your own um, childhood development, you probably have uh, memories of that developmental rate being your own as well. So I want you to think about that. And the last uh, bit of news I wanted to share is uh, our wonderful teacher in the middle school, Michelle Cheney, who just left on leave to have a baby, had a new baby. Uh, Arlo George was born six pounds 11 ounces congratulations michelle we miss you we're glad you're healthy and um i hope you get some sleep okay thanks everybody uh have a great weekend talk to you soon